SSH keys use public keys as a way to make it easier to log in to SSH and also to use Git commands. So the first thing you need to do is to generate a public private key pair. And you do that with SSH keygen. So SSH keygen is the command that you're going to run. And there are two important parameters. One, the 49, sorry, the minus B parameter specifies how large a key you want to use. So 4096 will make it large enough the NSA isn't going to crack it anytime soon. And the minus C specifies a comment for this public key private pair, public private key pair. So you might have multiple key pairs that you generate, and this somehow marks it. Often what someone uses is an email address. It's going to say that it's generating. It'll ask where you want to save it. And this is the default into ID underscore RSA in your .ssh directory. Just hit return if you'd like it there. Again, that's probably what you want. Then you want to enter a passphrase. So you'll type in a passphrase, which protects your private key. Okay, so it's a, an encryption of your private key itself. You enter that passphrase twice. Please don't leave it empty. And then it'll generate both, you'll notice, a private key, which is the ID underscore RSA, and then a corresponding public key, ID underscore RSA dot pub. All right, that's what gets generated. So now what you need to do is use it. Okay, we have, it's called an agent, so an SSH agent. And the SSH agent stores in memory your private keys. All right. And the SSH application talks with this SSH agent. So what you need to do is add your key to the agent. And you'll do that with SSH add. Now, depending on your OS, um, there's going to be some differences in how you use SSH add. So for the Mac, you're going to use SSH add minus K, capital K, which says put your passphrase, right, that is the signature for the private key, into the Mac keychain. So you can just do SSH minus K, or you can actually type it out, the dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA. Then it's going to prompt you for the passphrase, and then it'll store that passphrase. And from then on, the Mac SS agent will use the keychain to unlock the private key and, and store that in memory for you. Certainly, you'll just have to do that one time. For Linux or Windows, you won't use the minus K, so you'll just use SSH add. And again, you don't have to use this last parameter because the default is that's where your private key is. However, uh, SSH agent is not always running, so you may need to start the SSH agent, uh, at least possibly for Windows. Okay, I'll leave that to look at, do some Googling to figure that out. So once you've added it, then what's nice is you can just log in. Well, almost. So, now, so step one is we generate the keys. Or rather, our key pair. Right, it's a pair of a public and private key. Step two, we run SSH add. And now we need to go ahead and copy our public key onto the host that we're trying to log into. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll copy our public key to where we're going. So in this case, it's going to be, let's say, roads at knuth.cs.hmc.edu. And we want to put that in the 
dot ssh directory. So once we get there, and it's still going to prompt us for our username and password, sorry, for our password here when we do this. But once that's there, now we should be able to log into Knuth without having to provide any password. Okay. What happens is when we do something like SSH to, I'm going to just put Knuth here, but this is really because of my config, the same as roads at knuth.cs.hmc.edu. It's going to, on Knuth, look for any public keys and then provide uh, a challenge. It's basically a, a, a random value back to my local machine, to my local uh, SSH agent, asking whether I can sign that uh, random value with, my private, with the associated private key. Okay. And if I can, Knuth will go ahead then and verify using the public key that it was a correct signature, and then I've proven my identity and can log in. The, so this is great. This saves us the typing of our password each time. Makes life a lot easier. We don't have to do it for SSHs or SCPs or anything like that. The um, other thing that, that we can use the private key, public key pair for is to go ahead and do authentication to GitHub. So GitHub has a setting where you can provide a public key. So on GitHub, we can see in our settings, we can go down to SSH keys and just go ahead and add a key, paste it in. So we'll copy the contents of the public key file and then just paste it right in here. You can have more than one key associated with your GitHub account if you'd like. And then when you are doing a Git clone or something like that, then Git will do that same interaction with the SSH agent. It's important to realize, however, that those SSH keys only work if you are using a Git rather than an HTTPS protocol. Okay, So the HTTPS protocols won't work with the SSH keys, and they'll still require a username and password, but the Git protocols will work. So when you're uh, wanting to do a clone, make sure that when you copy from Git, you're asking for the Git version or the SSH version rather than the HTTPS version. version. So once you've set up your Git public key, then on your local machine, you can go ahead and do git commands that um, use your uh, a GitHub account and they won't require a username and password. Okay. But the documentation for the SSH keys, if you read about that, provides a testing mechanism. And so you can actually do an SSH minus T of git at github.com. And if you do this and it says permission, you know, unauthorized, permission denied, something like that, then you know your public key is not working. However, if it says uh, uh, Git does not allow logins, then that means that your public key did work. And for SSH, note, you can always add a minus V flag, and that's verbose, and that will print out information about what's happening in this uh, SSH uh, login protocol. And so you can see where, for instance, maybe there's not a public key on the Git side or it doesn't find your private key on the local side or where something has gone wrong. So that's why Git provides this SSH login capability is so that you can go ahead and use the minus V flag and diagnose what's going on. So on your local machine, this is going to work great. You're going to be able to use Git commands, use SSH minus T if you want. Uh, the problem is on Knuth, it's not going to work. And the reason is on Knuth, SSH agent doesn't have your private key. So the solution is use SSH minus A when you log in. Okay, so this is what I would use to log in. 
and the minus A does forwarding of the agent. So this is agent forwarding. So the way the agent forward, forwarding works is if we're on Knuth and we have some sort of an SSH command, it's going to try and talk to the SSH agent. Okay, But if you have forwarding on, instead, it's going to actually talk to, on your local machine, your SSH agent. And guess what? On your local machine, your SSH agent does have your private key. So the SSH on Knuth will, when it's queried, right? when you're trying to log in or using a private key, instead of using the local SSH agent, will go back to the SSH agent on your original machine. That works great. Um, the, the mechanism by which this works is this actually, when you do the minus A, sets up an environment variable called ssh underscore auth underscore sock. Okay. And this just gets set up appropriately so it talks to this local SSH agent. The only potential problem you might have is that if, let's say you run Tmux. Okay. So you run Tmux, um, and then you close SSH. And then you run SSH minus A to log in again. And then you reattach Tmux. Well, the problem there is that your shells from within Tmux do not have this environment set. The only one that has the environment set is the one that you got to when you did SSH minus A to Knuth. Okay. Environment variables don't automatically get propagated. There's, there's no mechanism for that because basically when you run SSH minus A Knuth, there's a set of processes that are already there from this Tmux. So they're this non-attached Tmux. So if you get in this situation, uh, two things you could do are just don't reattach your Tmux, just restart Tmux. And if you restart Tmux by itself, that will create a new process which will inherit the SSH auth SOC environment variable, just like it'll inherit all environment variables. Alternatively, what you can do is echo SSH underscore auth underscore SOC. So this is not a double quote. This is a dollar sign. And then whatever that value is, you can go into each of these shells in your Tmux uh, session and say uh, export ssh underscore auth underscore soc equals whatever this value was that you copied and pasted. So, you know, if it's printed out foo, you'll put foo in here. If you're not using Tmux, or if you're not actually storing Tmux sessions across logins, this is not an issue. You just do an SSH minus A Knuth, you do a Tmux, and then Git will work. Uh, Git, Git working with GitHub will work without any, without any having to type in your username or password. So that's SSH keys. It's a little bit of work to set it up, but boy, it saves a lot of time once you get it all set up. That's kind of like a lot of things in life and a lot of things in programming and working with computers, that there's a cost in setting things up, but there's a payback that it makes it worthwhile. So it's a worthwhile investment.